Malaysia Airlines Flight Number 370 left Kuala Lumpur for Beijing at 1 a.m. on March 8, 2014. Good night, Malaysia 370 was on 370's last signal before it disappeared with 239 people on board. Eight years after Malaysia Airlines Flight Number 370 disappeared, fresh information is disturbing. The jet disappeared from radar screens almost immediately after the final check-in as it transitioned from Malaysian to Vietnamese territory, perplexing aviation officials worldwide. The zone crossing chaos took air traffic controllers over 18 minutes to realize the plane had vanished. Ground personnel tried to contact the plane for several hours but got no response. The formal distress call was sent to Kuala Lumpur's Aeronautical Rescue Coordination Center about 6 a.m., almost four hours after the jet vanished. After 34 ships and 28 planes from seven countries searched the South China Sea, the jet was not found. Their quest was instantly misguided. Radar and satellite data revealed Flight MH370's terrible last hours days after it disappeared. After saying goodnight, the jet altered course. Following banking about Penang, it went northwest along the Strait of Malacca and out across the Andaman Sea after a fast turn to the southwest and flying back over the Malay Peninsula. The plane took nearly an hour to complete this maneuver, but the most unexpected radar data was that after the deviation, it flew for hours on autopilot before running out of fuel and crashing into the Indian Ocean, far from where it was first sought. Three significant inquiries followed the crash. Australia led the investigation and search due to its closeness to the likely crash site 1,200 miles southwest of Perth and its ability to undertake a large-scale marine search. They searched but found nothing. They undoubtedly wasted time searching for the plane's remains in black boxes in the South China Sea. After two months of aircraft searches, the crew charted and searched a deep, unexplored section of the Indian Ocean. After three years, they failed to find the jet, and the investigation was ended. Malaysian police's internal inquiry focused on passenger and crew background checks. The 2017 study stated that investigators were unable to determine a cause for Flight Omic 370's disappearance, which was disappointing. It cleared the staff and passengers. The third official investigation, the International Accident Inquiry, started poorly. Working across borders after a disaster is difficult, but the dictatorial and corrupt Malaysian administration made it practically impossible to conduct a full investigation. Malaysians wanted it over. They definitely weren't hiding anything, but they didn't know what they'd find if they delved too far, and they couldn't afford to find anything that would make the government or its airline seem bad. The Malaysians were soon revealed to know more about the disappearance. When the plane swerved off course, radar at a Malaysian military post caught it, but the base decided not to investigate because the plane appeared friendly. The Malaysians knew the flight's changing path for a while, but they didn't tell rescuers, who wasted hours and days looking in the wrong spot. More information that Malaysian officials had tried to keep secret would eventually make its way to the public and help paint a picture of what happened to Flight MA370 and why. But the third investigation was also unable to determine a cause due to a lack of cooperation and reliable data and was closed. A search for Flight MA370 continues, and recent finds have revealed many new details. An online organization of volunteer engineers and scientists called the Independent Group limited the search region. Radar and satellite data helped investigators and volunteers reconstruct the plane's flight path and find its last known location. The plane established contact with a satellite as it traveled south across the vast ocean toward Antarctica, which was outside its range, and their electronic handshake provides us a general idea of where the plane was last seen, possibly west of Australia. Another team started from the shorelines where plane components washed up and worked backwards by evaluating weather trends, drift patterns, and currents to reconstruct the Dibra's route and locate the jet's final resting place. The Indian Ocean has millions of square miles of sea and tens of thousands of kilometers of shoreline, making this a far bigger challenge than you might think. Searchers focusing on locations where debris had already been found, merely because people were looking there, can deflect attention from other places, notably to the north, where debris may still be found and bias the statistics. Experts call this the Gibson Effect. The Gibson Effect honors American lawyer and explorer Blaine Gibson. Gibson wants to see every country. Gibson, like us, loves a good mystery, so he rearranged his travel plans to help find flight number 370. 
after visiting Malaysia and meeting some of the families of those lost on MH370. Gibson visited coastal districts, where debris might wash up and methodically calm the beaches for clues. Gibson's crazy scheme worked. After consulting with Australian oceanographers on ocean currents and drift patterns, Gibson flew to Mozambique and asked local fishermen to show him where nets and fishing gear came ashore. He found the horizontal stabilizer panel from MH370, despite all odds. Gibson made links with people living near the Indian Ocean, so they might bring in new discoveries or sell them. Gibson found one-third of the dozens of MH370 wreckage pieces. In case he forgot, he often found empty bags and backpacks washing up with the detritus. What have we learned since Malaysia Airlines Flight No. 370 disappeared? What do we not know compared to now? First, we have adequate evidence to invalidate most Flight No. 370 conspiracy theories. The actual flight purpose is unknown, however radar and satellite anomalies may have been created to hide it. Another example is the British tarot card reader who was traveling across South Asia when she spotted a missile or suicide plane flying low overhead toward a Chinese fleet. After learning of Flight MH370's disappearance after returning from vacation, she assumed the jet she had seen was the missing one and began spreading her theory online, even though she was nowhere near the plane's track. Some believe the airliner entered a black hole or time loop. William Langewish of The Atlantic claims that all of these hypotheses ignore the satellite data and in some cases, also the radar tracks, the aircraft systems, the air traffic control record, the physics of flight, and the basic contours of planetary geography. Unsurprisingly, others wish to profit from the tragedy and mystery. Google Earth showed the plane's dried remains in shallow water, according to an Australian. He won't announce the spot of this historic find unless his Kickstarter expedition financing campaign succeeds. If we ignore the obvious scams, how many are there? Over the years, we've learned enough to speculate about Malaysia Airlines Flight Army 370's final hours. Since only a human pilot could turn around the jet, we know it was deliberate. The jet flew six hours on autopilot toward Antarctica before running out of fuel. The plane's last plunge was so dramatic, reaching speeds of 15,000 feet per second before crashing into the lake and bursting into a thousand pieces, that experts believe it was planned as the pace was five times quicker than an unassisted descent. Knowing that most of aircraft MH370's passengers and crew were likely deceased before the plane's dramatic last minutes may be consoling. Flight recorders show that the plane's electronic systems, including the cabin air pressurization system, were disabled after the initial turn. Then the person in charge presumably made a dramatic rise, which likely hastened the cabin's depressurization and killed everyone. At that height, oxygen masks falling from the cabin ceiling wouldn't have helped anyone. Everyone outside the cockpit would swoon and gently die from lack of oxygen within minutes. The cockpit contained hours of oxygen. Flight Army 370's disappearance is most likely due to pilot suicide. Despite the official Malaysian assessment finding no issues with either pilot, Tahiri Ahmad Shah, the pilot in charge, had recently divorced, had personal issues, and was likely profoundly depressed. He had also flown the plane's route on his home flight simulator. These are guesses. We don't know much about flight number 370's tragic disappearance. The pilot and their motives throughout the detour, extended flight, and terrible end are unknown. We don't know why the Malaysian military didn't act sooner or why search and rescue attempts were delayed. We don't know why the Malaysian government is so secretive or what they know that we don't. Even though we know where the aeroplane was before it ran out of fuel, we don't know where it crashed. We may never know what happened to Malaysian Airlines Flight MA370. The plane's wreckage quest continues and more information may emerge.